So the question today is what would I do to um, stop or affect corporations who are recording record profits from taking advantage of their workforce? And uh, it's a great question comes to us from Marlon and I'm going to have to, you know, kind of frame it just a little bit because it is such a, a big thing. And there's some really important distinctions, I think, that have to be highlighted uh, in this. So the first thing is just to remember the structure that we do operate under here in this country. So the U.S. government, unless you are violating laws that are already established, really can't tell a, corp a private corporation or even a public corporation um, what what they can do as far as their employee relationships uh, as long as they're not violating it according to abuse under the law it's, you, you don't have a lot of authority so given that that will affect what I my answers because I, I can't just tell a corporation to do this or do that but what I can do is incentivize or punish behaviors that are not beneficial to the overall uh, economy the overall uh, conditions or lived experience for our citizens so I'm gonna speak a little broader as far as that goes so the first thing I would touch on is I would go about taxes that would probably be the first um, option that I consider to affect some of the change that we're after and, and you know what wait I didn't even explain what changes I'm even after right so the, when I hear the question given that they have record profits how do we keep them from abusing their people or taking an over excess advantage of their workers that to me means how do we better allocate this this money right so are you profitable because you're keeping your labor costs down while the labor is creating your ability to generate the revenue and then because of this artificial gap that you've created you can now report these record profits which you just pass along to your highest earners uh, by way of bonuses and incentives and even in some cases outright salary increases so if that's how I'm reading that question Marlon if I'm off Please send me a, 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 a clarifying question or, or, or a statement or something like that. So if that's what we're dealing with, then that is uh, an accounting issue. It's a moral issue. And it's also a tax issue. And so I would say, and all, all those actually kind of tie together in my view. So I would say, First thing I'm going to do is, of course, I would assemble tax attorneys and, and tax accountants so that they can help me see things that I'm not possibly considering so that we can anticipate some of the tricks and the pushback and, and legitimate concerns that are going to come back our way. Um, but within the tax code, I would say we need to simplify the tax code. We need to... Um, go at the fact that one we are historically we have some of the lowest tax rates in history but even then the corporations especially your larger corporations are actively playing games according to the rules that are out there that they helped um, sometimes corruptly influence but they don't even want to pay those taxes so they just want to take as much of the riches and run and I don't think that that is fair I don't believe that that is proper uh, because you draw your success from this country you're using this country's number one resource which is its people 
you're using the fact that in this country there's a certain level of national security and um, protection from government abuses and overreach in order for you to build your business and get these profits you're talking about. So this isn't like you're doing this by yourself. You are literally using the American people and all the things that come through our tax system, right? National defense, the stable government, stable currency, um, the road work, the infrastructure, all of these things you rely on to run your business and make these record profits. And yet you don't think that it's necessary for you to pay taxes back into the system that you're extracting from. <clears throat> so we have to address the tax system. Um, and for me, when I talk about taxes, it's a very, well, it's not a simple thing, but to simplify it, we're talking about revenue. How does the U.S. government get the money that it needs to protect and grow the country? So if you are taking from the country, but on the same time, you're refusing to put things back, that is a problem. You're actually hurting the very thing that you claim to be helping. Because see, what you'll say is, well, we pay employment taxes. Okay, smaller businesses pay employment taxes and they pay their federal income taxes and they pay their state income taxes. So that's not an excuse. You don't get to pick which ones you're gonna pay. But in exchange for that, we need to make this easier for all the ones who are in here making this day, making this whole system work. And that means we got to cut out all these loopholes, simplify the tax code very, very much. Like you make this, this is your tax rate. This is what you pay. And we bring these rates down so that there's less of a reason to move things offshore. And if you are moving things offshore and you're moving it offshore, not to, operate your business, you're just moving it offshore into these tax havens, then we're going to punish you and we're going to penalize you. And if that means you're going to get up and move your company overseas, well, so be it. But once you get to these other countries, they're going to do the same thing because the places that are offering tax havens, they can't support your business. So you're using a shell game to take from us and put it in your pocket. So that's not okay. So I would say we need to uh, clean up the tax code so that there's less of an incentive to, to, to move and hide the money. And if you do try to move and hide the money uh, for illicit reasons, then we will punish you. We will take even more from you in penalties and uh, things like that. Um, so that's one thing. I know that doesn't quite sound like an answer to the question, but it helps to help. It helps because you have to help the company too, right? So the company, in order for them to take care of their employees, they have to have the resources to do it. Yes, I know we say they have the profits. Yes, those profits should be better deployed, but you have to get a hold on where that money is going to leak off to if you try to do any of the other fixes that are needed. Now, we've streamlined the tax code. Next thing we're going to do so we're going to add back in a couple of incentives. We're going to say that if you employ X number like of people, right, actual employees. So I'm just going to pick a number out of my head. I'm saying, yeah, I'd have at least a staff of 200 people. If you are an employer of 200 or more you know, people and we can index it so that you hit certain points so that the really big companies get a much better incentive but you have this number of employees and then you also have this rate of hiring and you also have and which would probably be a smaller that would that would probably be a smaller number but you also have another threshold for hitting uh, retention you're hitting all three of those then you have now unlocked uh, an additional incentive that would, you know, reduce your taxes or actually rebate money back to you, right? So probably a rebate would be better than 
than the tax deduction because which I guess they work essentially the same way but we want to make sure that you're starting from that baseline number where you earned this you're gonna pay this and then we start adding things back in but we have to be um, very selective and not a whole lot of them or else we put ourselves right back where we came from but in, incentivize the behavior that we think is best for the country so I think that it is best for the country for you to be investing in hiring and retention I think it's an investment in the country for you to be sponsoring um, or donating to uh, various specific uh, charity groups or oh, nice no, oh, no charities yes absolutely because we're always gonna have them um, but you can't own the charity you cannot have any ownership interest in the charity so you would have to be <laughs> sending money other places so maybe they may I don't know so maybe I have to think about that one a little bit more but you know we want to get more of the money back in um, now this is kind of a tangent so I'm gonna try not to go into it too much but as we do that to control more of the money coming in we got to put a lot of work into fixing how our government works so that that money doesn't just get sloshed around and pushed off um, to things that don't actually help and don't actually do the things that we're telling these corporations we want their money to go do right if you're gonna if we're gonna tell you give us more money we have to be better stewards with the money so that's another one I'll probably do that video myself if no one asked me about it but <clears throat> definitely you know we got to fix the government itself um, so that would get more money in by revenue incentivize the retention um, I would say maybe have something where they can opt into for example because uh, it wouldn't be mandatory it wouldn't be compulsory uh, and it would actually I think be separate from the tax code so now I'm talking about something slightly different so now what we would do is um, if you index like compensation so um, if you're going to give your CEO or the C-suite um, these stock options and 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 these raises and so forth whatever that quantifies to right so if that's like giving your CEO a 10% raise then we need to have it where it backs back down to where if you want to do 10% fine you want to give your CEO a 10% raise then we the US government will pay 3% of that I'm just making up a number but we the US government pay 3% of that 10% but that 10% has to be indexed in such a way that everyone downstream also gets a 10% raise so if you can't afford 10 then you need to dial that back maybe instead of 10 you gotta give them 5 well now that 5 will pay 2% and now you're effectively saving money here, but you got to pull everybody else along the chain, right? So each uh, classification band, because this is something I would do for my business. I actually have a plan for this. So each band, right? So you got your hourly employees, you got your salary employees, you have your lower level management, you have your mid management, you have your executive management, right? Each of these bands, there's pay windows that they sit in right because that's how you structure your compensation well if you're gonna move the top band up by 10 percent then you're gonna have to move the next band up the next band up the next band up so everybody from the CEO to the janitor is being pulled forward and you can only pull yourself forward as much as you can afford to do it so if you can't afford to do it don't do it right so I think that would be something but it would be optional because it's not something I can mandate to someone with their own business that they started. But because you opted into it, that 10% increase, we're offsetting 3% of that. So that's a big savings for you out of what you're trying to do with your profits. Um, also, I think there should be a windfall tax. 
And I would say, though, that the windfall tax should be where, like, I don't know what the number is. I think it already exists in concept, like Elizabeth Warren, I want to say, has been pushing for it. But let's just say that, I don't know, you earn profits greater than, I don't know, 50%. I don't know what the number is, but you know what I'm talking about. Like, they always say, well, we have record profits of a 10% increase. All right, well, anything past that is windfall. And so that money should come backwards and go straight into the labor market so that you're helping with, and this, this is why I say you got to clean up the government so that the money comes back into the government, but it doesn't go into the general fund. It actually goes directly into indicated uh, or, 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 or uh, dedicated account that helps with reskilling, um, job placement, job training, um, all of those things. So that when the company is hitting this, this, this windfall, the money is coming back into the government, but it's coming into the government to directly invest in giving these corporations as a whole a much better skilled uh, workforce to pull from. Because right now, these corporations are taking on a lot of the expense that the U.S. Gov that, that the U.S. government should be doing. The U.S. government should be investing in schools and making sure that these young people and young adults and people and non-traditional students are able to actually do the work that today requires. But what the U.S. government has been doing is intentionally neglecting our education system and neglecting our students so that the corporations then have to now invest more money into either paying more to get an Ivy League person because they're the only ones who got the education needed and the skills needed, or they have to go and, and pay themselves to upskill all their employees. When instead, as a national good, as a national investment, we should be investing in our, in our um, up and comers so that our corporations are always having the cream of the crop to go and go to work. All right, that does a couple things. One, it reduces um, some of the immigration because now we're not pulling from around the world to get their best. We have a lot more of best right here locally so we can actually hire domestically at a greater clip. Still going to have immigration because you need specialists and you need people who are just really good at whatever that thing is. But we also need to be doing that here so that the rest of the world continues to come to us to get some of our talent and we have some of our talent right here. So really, really, really buy into this global community and America's community. Right. So I would definitely push really hard for that. Um, and then um, last one I would say, Marlon, is if you are a company or corporation or, or what have you, that is basically a public good or you feed into the national defense structure, right? Like our defense contractors, Lockheed Martin, you know, uh, Boeing, right? A lot of these companies, um, Norfolk Southern, CSX Rail, right? The banks, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, right? They are. And the investment companies, you know, ING's and all of them. They are so big. And yet, and they also claim such major profits constantly. And yet, they are getting, in many cases, subsidies and special considerations from local and national governments to operate like Amazon, for example, will demand certain concessions for taxes to, to start um, their business in a particular state because they know they're going to bring a lot of employment. But we 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 give them to the point where they don't even have to pay taxes and then we can barely control what they're doing to their employees. So then they're just perpetuating a larger problem and sucking more money out of the system where they should be putting money in as well. So. If you're a national public good utility operating kind of level thing, then we need to really take a hard look at you and find out if you're going to be this hybrid thing, then are we getting what we need out of this situation as well? 
Now, I'm gonna use the rail companies just as the example because it's the more current one, but they rely on the rails, <laughs> right? The trains can't run without rails. The rails require US territory to even be there to operate. So if you want to not take care of your employees to the point where the government has to kick in and try to do more to help your employees, even though you're extremely profitable, but because you are such a big part of the, the global or the US economy, you extort the US government to, to do these things, then I, as one solution I would push, we should take ownership of the rails, own them all. And that would then shift the responsibility for the technology, the upgrades, the maintenance, all of the things that presently sit on these private companies to have to do, that would come back to us. We would have to take care of it because we own it, right? But then those companies would have to pay us for usage. So the on the one hand, they would save on the the maintenance and upkeep and, and innovation piece of the rail part, which they don't want to do, which is why they keep deferring it, which is why it's continuing to crumble and fall behind the rest of the world. Well, fine, put that on us. You pay us to use our rails. And now we'll be able to keep you from continuing to artificially suppress things like passenger rail because they do this where, because these private companies own the rails, they can keep uh, passenger rail from ever becoming a thing again because those passenger rails don't own the rails and they have to pay these these commercial these uh bulk uh rail companies um to use them so that just means that the bulk rails are always going to take priority so you're not going to be able to get anything running no we own the rails you pay us lease and 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 and, and, and you pay us to use it that money also goes into a dedicated fund or account where it's going into the um, ingenuity, uh, the upgrades, getting us into high-speed rail, all the different things that are needed to actually make us competitive on the global scale. And now we're using money from these major companies that are extorting us presently um, to do this, but at the same time, we're, le we're taking some of the pressure off of them Right. Because if you're going to take something, you got to give them something. You're taking some of the pressure off of them. Right. Uh, so those are some of the things that I would say, Marlon, uh, long story short. Hope I answered some of your questions. If you have follow up ones, throw them at me. Um, clarifying things. Let me know. I'd be happy to dig in and go a little bit further. So what if Theus ran for Congress? What would I do to. Um, stop or affect these corporations from taking advantage of their workers despite having record profits. Thank you for watching the video and look forward to more of your questions. Goodbye for now.